Welcome back, everyone, to Tennessee This Week. It is time to hear from our panel of pundits on this Sunday. And joining us now, everyone, we have WATE Six on Your Side healthcare analyst Craig Griffith, WATE Six on Your Side political contributor Courtney Piper, and we also have attorney James Corcoran. Always good to see all three of you. Thank you for coming in. Glad Thank to you. be here. Thanks Let's go ahead and talk about... Uh, Dr. Briggs and what we just heard, and again, we spoke with his uh, Democrat, his challenger in this race, Jamie Ballinger, a few weeks ago. What do you guys think of this race and how it's shaping up, Craig? Well, I don't see what the issue is his opponent is going to bring up that he hasn't championed already. So I think it's a very solid Republican district. I think that he'll carry it fairly easily. Uh, it's good to always have a, a discussion of the issues involved. but. Uh, Dr. Briggs is champion in Sure Tennessee in the legislature uh, to not much success as we as we listen, but I think that he'll be able to win this yeah. fairly fairly handily. Yeah. That is not usually a Republican issue, though, when it comes to Insure Tennessee. You think that's something that will attract voters on both sides? Well, healthcare is is pulling out to be one of the strongest issues in, in with the electorate this year. And I, I found it somewhat unusual that uh, Senate Majority Leader McConnell in, a, in an Reuters interview said that they're going to take up repealing Obamacare again in the next session. Uh, that tells me that they think they're fairly confident in maintaining the majority in the Senate. Otherwise, they wouldn't be bringing up such a contentious issue right here when people have already started to go to the polls and early voting. Courtney, what do you think of this race? Well, first, let me disclose that I have contributed to Jamie Ballinger's campaign, and she is the Democratic opponent mm -hmm. to Senator Richard Briggs. Um, but what I've heard from Senator Briggs, he spent a lot of time talking about health care, and while I can appreciate what he has done in the Tennessee General Assembly, and I've talked about this many times on the show, he's really had an opportunity to, to lead and lead his own party and lead the Tennessee General Assembly, and I think that he's failed to do that. So in my opinion, as we're looking at health care as really the number one issue in our state, you know, it's time for some fresh leadership and a new perspective to see if we can really get something done on health care. Richard Briggs has really, he's tried, um, but it's not enough. It's not enough for the most, uh, more than 290,000 Tennesseans that are without health care. James? Well, I just, the idea that a freshman legislator would be in the opportunity to provide the leadership that Briggs has. Briggs is on the right committees. So if health care is your issue, he's in a position to make a difference. And the question is, but is there going to be enough votes? Yet. Well, he can't change the votes of every single other sure member of the legislature. That is part of being in the legislative body, is being able to get votes from your colleagues. <laughs> not uh, always that is that the no, that's not. Part, that is the key part of being a legislator, is to go to your colleagues and say, I need you to vote on this, I, what can we do? Well, it, it, and I think he's tried to do that, but it, it's it, with the overwhelming majorities that the conservative Republicans have, it just wasn't going to pass. But listen, the majority, the vast majority of Tennesseans want this kind of Medicaid expansion, and for us to be unable to do it points to leadership in the Tennessee General Assembly. It points to those people that wanted to elect leaders that will vote for it, and they have not elected leaders that will vote for it. Let's go ahead and move on here and talk about some of the races going on right now. We brought you another debate recently between the candidates for Tennessee Governor Carl Dean and Bill Lee. Unlike the Senate debate, there was plenty of agreement between these two. Very friendly. Uh, what is your take on how this race in the general election has been going? James, let's talk. Let's start with you here. Uh, it was possibly the friendliest debate I have been a part of, and I was there, so I got to see even you know when they came out to the podiums and the cameras weren't quite on them yet. They actually went into part of the stage and stood there and talked until things started. So there was definitely, um, it wasn't contentious like some of the other ones we saw just that very same week. What do you think of this? Well, Bill Lee came through squeaky clean in one of the most rough and tumble Republican primaries that we've had in a really long time. And he's came through with, with a halo intact. And I really think that for to make any sort of difference, uh, that Carl Dean would have really had to come out swinging and really, really drawn some blood, and I just don't think he's done that. I think Bill Lee is going to carry the state, and I think he's going to do so pretty handily. What about you, Courtney? Well, first, let me disclose that I've contributed to Carl Dean's campaign for governor. Do you have any money left for the triplets? <laughs> have you I mean, contributed the to the Kristen Farley fund? <laughs> I do. I do. The now accepting requests. Um, what I thought of the debate, you know, I looked at that debate, and we all have gone through the one of the first televised debates with Nixon and Kennedy, where we all learned that sometimes uh, style can trump substance. And I think in this particular debate, Carl Dean seemed a lot more personable. He seemed a lot more warm to his audience. 
moments where Bill Lee just seemed almost like a robot at times, like he couldn't get off of his talking points. And so to that end, I, I feel like Carl Dean did a little bit better in this debate because he was more pointed with his answers at times, and he was really able to draw the clear distinction between, if I were your governor, here's what I would do for you. That's different from the man sitting next to me on the it, stage. The polls right now are showing Lee with a pretty substantial lead, but there was a lot of differences that were that came up during that debate in terms of the political experience that Dean has versus Lee having virtually none. Do you think in the end that's going to play a role? I, I don't know. That's always a toss-up. You can have a lot of really motivated voters that look at no ex political experience and go, well, yes, that's why I want him running state government. And then you could have another group of voters that go, well, if I was hiring somebody for a job, I'd want them to have a little bit of experience about how something like this works. And so it's a toss up. I don't think that it's, uh, I don't think it's necessarily a positive or a negative because it can be balanced can out. Be both. All right, Craig, so what do you think? Do you think the polls are true and that Lee's going to win this pretty handily? Political gravity is setting in in this race, just as it is probably in the Senate race. Uh, Tennessee went uh, two out of three voters for Trump, and they're going to go for the conservative Republican. The businessman, the same model that Trump had when he went into office. So I think it's fairly clear that Lee is leading in the uh, in the polls and probably will win on election day. Uh, Carl Dean has some, you know, he, he again, we have this same issue between the Republicans and the Democrats that we've had in most offices expand you know, Medicare expand, TenCare, and it hasn't been an issue that the Democrats have been able to win with yet. So, in the last three or four election cycles, so I don't. And and part of it is that Bill Lee doesn't have a record. There's nothing that that uh, Carl Dean can uh, attack his his uh, background on or his uh, past po voting record. So he, there's not really much that he can you know. Uh, do any negative ads with on Bill Lee. It's, it's been and, a very nice, friendly campaign so far. Right, and let's face it, the reason Bill Lee is is in this race is because he stood up above the fray in the primary, and that what so many voters were attracted to him yeah. for, and I think that'll extend into the general election. We're going to talk a little bit about that fray coming up in another race. We need to take a quick break, everyone. Still to come, both sides hammering away in the Senate race. We're going to have that next. Stay with us. You're watching Tennessee This Week on WATE 6 on your side.